Greetings, greetings, and this is Apostle Curtis Lewis. I want to say Shabbat, uh, Shalom. Well, actually, we passed the Shabbat, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna say Shalom. Amen. I'm excited, waiting for the next Shabbat. I guess this is Apostle Curtis Lewis. We're coming in the name of Yahshua, Hamashiach, Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. Hallelujah. I have an interesting lesson tonight and I have a task before me to prove that the majority of the teaching that I have heard uh, the last 40 some odd years concerning Jacob's trouble has been wrong. Now that's easy for, any, for me to say or anybody to say, <clears throat> But I'm going to go to the scripture and I'm going to let the scripture do the talking. Hallelujah. So I want uh, everyone to get ready, get your notepad, get your pen, get your Bible, get ready to take notes. And when I finish, if the most high help me and I ask my wife to be praying for me that I can get through this. Uh, when I finish we are going to see how silly the doctrine of Jacob's trouble is because it was the Europeans who conquered us and conquered our document and interpreted it, whitewashed it and taught these things. And most of the Hebrews who are now in the awakening still believe that Jacob's trouble, that term Jacob's trouble, is still a future trouble that's coming for Jacob and all the Israelites. And when I finish, uh, again, the most high willing, I'm going to show you how ridiculous that doctrine is. The most high has uh, given me an eye for bad doctrine. I've been dealing with false doctrines all my life. Now, there was a time in my life that I taught this as a doctrine. Uh, but the Most High woke me up and he began to teach me and he began to show me things. And so tonight we are going to deal with this devilish doctrine, how they flip the switch on us. And I'm going to show you that this is trouble for the Europeans that troubled Jacob. That's what I'm going to set out to do. Okay. We're going to start with a word of prayer. I want to ask you to share it. Amen. This is going to be an interesting lesson. Um, I'm not trying to get anybody to agree with me, but I'm going to give enough scriptures and I'm going to make it simple, plain, and I'm going to let the scriptures interpret themselves. So when I finish, your argument is going to be with the Holy Scriptures because I'm not going to give a private interpretation. I am not going to go to uh, Webster Dictionary. I'm not going to go to any Greek nor Hebrew. I'm not going to go to anybody's commentary. Uh, most of you know lately what I've been doing is I've been allowing the Bible to interpret itself. In fact, that's the way it's supposed to be done. The scripture says there's no prophecy of the scriptures is of any private interpretation. No one's supposed to be interpreting the Bible or explaining the Bible because the Bible interprets itself and it explains itself. And so we've had so many people going outside of the scriptures to get definition sources and different commentaries. And then they come back and tell you that the Bible is saying something that it's not saying that has been nothing but deception. Now, there are times when I look at dictionaries and um, Greek and Hebrew but lately, the most have been telling me, just go to the scriptures, just teach the scriptures and let the scriptures explain themselves. And when I finish, anybody that want to debate, let them debate with these simple scriptures. Amen. And on this channel, we don't do the debate thing. I don't even believe in that. I will dispute a lie and I will reason with anyone. And uh, most of you know that if uh, someone have an extended question, you can always reach out to me at SCMCCI at hotmail.com. My, my lovely wife is in the chat and I'm sure she's going to put that information in for you. And um, 
And while I'm teaching, I don't usually look at the chat. Every now and then I may glance at it, but I'm focusing on the lesson. That's the way the Most High has used me. There are sometimes I interact with the chat, but not all the time. And the, tonight I want to stay focused because I want to be clear and precise. And I want these scriptures to destroy this big lie about seven more years of great tribulation coming for the Israelites. No such creature. It's a lie. That's something coming, but it's not for the Israelites. It's for those who troubled the Israelites. So let's have a word of prayer. Abba Father, Yah, we give thanks to you first of all. We ask you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon me, upon my thoughts, upon my words. Help me, Father, to articulate this word properly, clearly, and scripturally. I pray for those in the chat already logging in on YouTube. I pray for those that can hear us on Facebook, Apostle Curtis Lewis, and Facebook, Someone Cares Outreach. I pray that people will uh, open up the eyes of their understanding by way of submitting to the Spirit of God and that they'll take off their denominational glasses, take off their European glasses, take off their doctrinal glasses, and look at the perfect law of liberty. And I pray that you'll open the eyes of our understanding and give us wisdom and knowledge in the word. Destroy every lie that Satan has constructed. And you said, any plant that my father have planted shall be plucked up by the roots. I pray, Father, for healing to go forth as truth go forth. You said you send your word and you heal the people. I pray signs and wonders follow the teaching of the truth of the word of God. You said thy word is truth. And I pray that your spirit, the power of the most high God, would pour, be poured out on the house of Israel on this great awakening of the Hebrew Israelites, Negroes waking up all over the world. Father, my concern is Israel. However, I'm not an Israel-only salvation person. Therefore, I do pray for those grafted in or desire to be grafted in. But Father, let them come for real. We pray and ask this in the name of Yeshua, Jesus the Christ. Amen and amen. Okay, all righty. <clears throat> all right, now, we're going to go to our lesson for the day. I'm going to try to take my time because I do this uh, get excited, amen, but I really want to teach today because I want to make everything simple and plain. Amen. And uh, uh, so I want <clears throat> to go through this and um, and I'm going to let the scriptures destroy every lie that has been told to us. OK, my text uh, is Jeremiah 30, verse seven. Hallelujah. And it reads as follows. And you notice it. It's on the screen. Hallelujah. Alas, for that day is great so that there i'm sorry so that none is like it it is even the time of jacob's trouble but he shall be saved out of it let me read that again <clears throat> alas for that day is great so that none is like it it is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Okay. Now, my subject is going to be Jacob's trouble, comma, is it for the Europeans or for Jacob? Question mark. Amen. That's my subject. Jacob's trouble, is it for the Europeans or for Jacob? Okay, now in this lesson, I'm going to go to the scriptures and show that Jacob's trouble is not trouble coming for Jacob. It is trouble coming for those who troubled Jacob. Let me say that again, because when I get through with these scriptures, I want you to see that people have taken things in this Bible and twisted it and given their own opinion of things. And most of us have heard the opinions of men and the doctrines of devils and the doctrines of our conquerors. 
And those of us in the awakening, many of us have come out of uh, this Eurocentric Christianity circle, but there is still a residue of some of that doctrine in us or in some of us. Let me say it like that. And one of those doctrines is Jacob's trouble, because Jacob's trouble is taught as if uh, after all the stuff the Israelites have been through, many of them still believe that we waiting on another seven years of trouble like we ain't never seen. And it's all for us. Now, that's the biggest lie we could have ever been told and biggest lie uh, we could have ever accepted because this is the trouble for them that troubled us. Okay. So I'm going to set out to prove that today with the Bible. Okay. So <clears throat> now let me go to my introduction of this lesson. All right. Number one, this lesson in and of itself is, a ve is the very reason why I like to let the scriptures interpret itself. See, the Bible says study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Notice what it did not say. It did not say rightly dividing sources. It did not say rightly dividing dictionaries, Greek, Hebrew, or outside sources. That's not what it said. Now, I am not saying to not look at dictionaries. I'm not saying to not look at Hebrew or Greek. That's not what I'm saying. Don't hear what I'm not saying. But what I am saying is the scripture didn't say do that. So let me quote that again. It says, study to show thyself approved, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You're supposed to stay within the word of truth and rightly divide it. You're supposed to let the scriptures interpret themselves. Why? Because there's nothing in the scripture is of any private interpretation. So anything outside of the scriptures is something, somebody private interpretation. Even if it's some definition you don't want and found. Somebody gave that definition, okay? But we, if we believe these are the scriptures, we can stay within these scriptures and these scriptures can teach you everything you need to know. Now the Bible says in Jeremiah 1 verse 12, the Bible say, Yah, watches over his word to perform it, okay? And Yah has sent his word in many languages all over the world, not just Hebrew. I had a young man was on in my live one day, I'll leave him nameless, but he said, oh no, bro, you got to go on and learn Hebrew because uh, it's more power in Hebrew. Now, what you find that at in any scripture? I understand Hebrew is the language uh, uh, that the Bible was originally written in. And I understand there's a lot of value in Hebrew and going back looking at that. But the Bible say, y'all watch over his word to perform it wherever he sent it. So we know that the Bible has been translated in many languages. And if you tell me that y'all God Almighty loses power when it gets to another language, then you don't know him. Bible said he's got all power. And so that's just not an accurate statement. And in any language where Yah word has went, he loses no power at all. Truth is truth, period. And John 17, 17 said, thy word is truth. And I got an English Bible here, and I'm going to take this English Bible, which I believe to be the word of truth. And I've been believing that for going on some 44 years. It has brought me out of sin. It's brought me out of games. It saved my life five times. It caused me to live holy every single day. It causes me to understand the most high. And I'm not a Hebrew scholar. I know a few words in Hebrew, and I'm thankful for that. I've learned a few, a few words as far as his name is concerned, and I'm thankful for that. But I found him in this English language. 
And you mean to tell me he can't teach me in, the, in whatever language I grew up in? Yes, he can. The Bible says that when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. Now watch what it didn't say. He will guide you into all sources. That's not what it said. Now, again, I'm not down in sources. I believe sources has its place. I believe all of that stuff has its place. I'm just telling you what the scriptures say. And anybody want to argue, they have to argue with the scripture. The scripture said with the spirit of truth, when he's come, he will guide you into all truth. He can keep you right inside of the truth and the truth will explain itself. And this is why I'm teaching it like this, because people need to come back to putting their faith in the, the Ruach, Hakadesh, the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, or whatever you call it, and, and the word of God. That's all you need. Amen. And the Bible says, 1 John 2, 27, that uh, the anointing that you have received abided in you and you need not that any man should teach you, but that the same anointing teaches you of all things and it is truth. Hallelujah. So our dependency is upon stuff that that that's that the Bible never told you to put your dependency upon. And that's why we get deceived. And this doctrine right here been around the church world for decades. And it has deceived so many people, but we're going to dismantle it today. So I'm just laying a good foundation before I go further, because when you look at what the scripture had to, has to say about this one term here, Jacob's trouble, it's going to it's going to make this doctrine look silly before it's over. Hallelujah. And you're going to and some of y'all probably going to say, how in the world I was tricked and I believe that. Hallelujah. It's simple. We listen to people. We listen to what people say it means. We go hook stuff up in scripture and try to make it say something it's not said. And so we're going to dismantle this lie today. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. So let's go back here. I'm still in my introduction. <clears throat> this lesson in and of itself is, is the very reason why I like to let the scripture interpret itself. And that's why you ain't going to see me going no Greek, Hebrew and all this other stuff right now. And I'm not saying I won't ever do that. I'm just saying for the for the sake of uh, clarifying things, making it simple and destroying the devil's lies, we're going to stay right in the word of truth in whatever language uh, we find it in. <clears throat> OK, let's re let's just read. Let's just take some time and read. OK, we're going to take some time and read. Now, the first thing we're going to read, we're going to read my text again. Uh, Jeremiah 30, verse seven. And then. Well, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Let's just read Jeremiah 30, verse 7. Watch this again. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. But, now you see that but? I got it highlighted. I got stars around it. Because he's talking about something here. He's talking about a day that is great. It is, it is, the, it is a great day. Great in that it's going to be a day like the world ain't never seen and never will see again. Now, whether you know it or not, this is called the day of his vengeance, the day of the Lord, the day of his wrath. And I've done lessons on it. Now, I don't have time to go off on another lesson, but I can easily prove that this day right here that he's talking about is the day of wrath. And Israel is protected from the day of wrath. Because you can go look at uh, Revelation uh, chapter 6, start at verse 12 down to the last few verses. It announces in the sixth seal that the day of his wrath has come. Okay. And then you go to Revelation chapter 7, verse 1 down to verse 4. You see the angels went to the four corners to gather all 12 tribes out of the earth and he and the angels held back the wind because they was getting ready to hurt the earth because of the wrath of God but he took Israel out of the earth and then marked and chose 12,000 from the 12 tribes of Israel and then he proceeded to hurt the earth once he got his servants out of the earth and so the day of his wrath and the day of his vengeance is for those that troubled uh, Israel. And it matches perfectly with Jeremiah 30, verse 7. But like I said, we'll go to those scriptures in another time and prove that on another lesson. But this day right here, alas, which is talk, uh, pronouncing a woe, 
A woe is a judgment and a misery that's coming. So he says, alas, for that day, that's this day that he talking about, is great so that there's none like it. And ain't going to be, a, it's going to be a time that it, uh, uh, so much heart. The Bible said it's going to be so many people killed and it's going to be so many dead bodies. He's going to beat so many kings upside the head. The Bible said their bodies going to, he's going he to he kill a bunch of people. The blood going to come up to the horse's bridle. The Bible said he's going to call the birds to eat their flesh and he's going to call it the great supper of God, not the supper of the lamb, but the great supper of God. That's what this is talking about. We'll prove that on another lesson, but let's keep going. Alas, for that day is great so that none is like it. We won't ever see another day like this forever. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. So right here, the translator saw fit to put name this Jacob's trouble. But the but the next verse says, but, but, but has changed something. He's talking about a day that that uh that that uh that we'll never see again. He's talking about a great day, and then he said, But but Jacob he shall be saved out of it. Now, you know, for those that like to look stuff up, it really means from or out of it. So he's talking about a great day, and he said, Jacob's trouble, and we just see that term Jacob trouble and automatically think it's trouble for Jacob. But before we finish, I'm gonna come back and read the whole chapter and note nothing in the chapter says that. And everything in the chapter says something opposite of what people think it's saying, but yet they think that's trouble for Jacob. That's what we get for listening to people. I'm not there yet, but we're gonna get there. But this but right here shows that Jacob will be saved out of it. Jacob not going to go through it. Jacob going to be protected from it. And the rest of the chapter going to prove that, that what I just said is true. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let me, let me, I, I'm getting excited already. Hallelujah. I'm going to preach myself happy, but I want to make sense. I want these scriptures to explain itself. Now you, you see that scripture right there said, but he, Jacob going to be delivered out of it. This not for Jacob. But we think this is for Jacob. Let me say this. In this Bible that I studied, this King James Bible, the term Jacob's trouble is only found one time. Now, there are people that can go run to other scriptures and say, oh, well, this, this, is, this is what goes with that. No, I ain't talking about something that go with it. I'm just saying the only time I have found the term we know we know Jacob and the Israelites was going to go through tribulations and great tribulations. We know that. But I'm talking about this term right here, Jacob's trouble. Jacob's trouble, this term, I only found one time, just one time, Jacob's trouble, one time. And so we have made, we have allowed people to make a whole doctrine called Jacob's trouble. And the term is only found one time. You got to at least have two witnesses. The Bible said in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Now, I am not talking about the tribulation and the great tribulation that Israel was prophesied to go through. I, that's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about this term right here, Jacob's trouble, because this is a whole doctrine that's been taught to people. But the Bible said, if you just go with what the scripture says, it says, but he shall be delivered, delivered out of it. It's not for him. It's sitting right there in plain reading and comprehension telling you, but Jacob not going through it. The Jacob trouble, it's Jacob's trouble according to what is state, but he gonna be delivered out of it. He gonna be saved from it. And I'm gonna prove it to you by the whole chapter when we get there, okay? Now, next thing, uh, number two, I'm going to go to Jeremiah chapter 30, the whole chapter before we finish. And we're going to read the whole chapter. But before I do, hallelujah, let me go over a few facts to show that the Bible does not agree with that so-called doctrine called Jacob's trouble. Because they say it's a seven-year tribulation that Jacob and Israel got to go through. A third of the Israelites or a bunch of the Israelites going to be killed. 
Some of them going to be left. Some of them going to be persecuted. Man, after all the stuff we've been through, you think you think that's true? I'm going to show you when I end, I'm going to show you how silly that is and how much these Gentiles tricked us with our own document, how much they twist this Bible. Hallelujah. We need to get righteously indignant behind the devil lying to us. I'm not talking about doing anything physically to anybody. I'm talking about standing up boldly, calling the devil a liar and anybody that preach this lie, let them know it's a lie. Hallelujah. We ought to have a righteous indignation for them deceiving us. Hallelujah. So we're going to come back. I'm going to take a little journey, but we're going to come back and we're going to go through the whole chapter. And I'm going to show you the entire chapter contradict that doctrine that most people believe. The entire chapter. OK, now, but before I go there, let me give you a few facts. Now, a lot of people talk about this day, you know, in the book of Revelation, they look at the different things that's got to come to pass, all the horrors and the different things that's coming, the Antichrist and all of this stuff. So they, they, they tend to think that this is prophesied somewhere in the book of Revelation. Let me share this with you. And I challenge you to take notes and go check this out. OK, in the book of Revelation, from Revelation chapter one, all the way to the end. I think it's got what, 22 chapters? Let me double check, I wanna be sure. 22 chapters, yeah, 22 chapters, all right? I challenge you in the book of Revelation, uh, uh, start at chapter one, go all the way to chapter 22. Here is what you're gonna find. You're gonna find seven churches, seven spirits, seven golden candlesticks, seven stars, seven lamps, seven seals, seven horns, seven eyes, seven angels, seven trumpets, seven thunders, uh, seven thousand, seven heads, seven last plagues, and seven mountains. I challenge you to go find seven years of tribulation anywhere in the book of Revelation. So how in the world we believe in for a seven year tribulation for the Israelites coming in the book of Revelation in the end times and it ain't nowhere in the Bible, nowhere. And I'm gonna go to that over there in Daniel where they take and hook some stuff up. We're gonna look at that too. I'm just saying, if Yah God Almighty was that detailed concerning seven, 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 why can't we find seven years? <laughs> Fool for thought. We've been tricked. Hallelujah. Let's keep going. Do, uh, let's go to Daniel. Daniel uh, chapter 9, verse 25, because this is where some of the Gentiles took some of this stuff and started hooking it up. And uh, this is my slide here. I, I forgot to turn my slide, but number three was talking about um, uh, Revelation chapter one, all the way through to 22. Seven churches, seven spirits, seven uh, golden candlesticks, seven stars, seven lamps, seven seals, seven horns, seven eyes, seven angels, seven trumpets, seven thunders, seven thousand, seven heads, seven last plagues, seven mountains, no seven years, nowhere to be found. But yet we believe that. Hallelujah. Let's keep going. All right. Daniel 9, 24. Uh, okay. Now we're going to take our time and go through this. Now, I, I know this is not going to be a short lesson, but I'm going to try to not make it long, too long. So some of this stuff, I may have to quote scriptures and we'll come back and do other lessons, but I'm going I'm to, but I'm going to give you enough scriptures to know I'm not giving you my opinion, but now we're going to go through this Daniel 70 weeks or with a, fine tooth comb. Okay. Cause this is where they get some of this stuff from and hook stuff up and just lie to us. And some of us then come out of the Eurocentric and let me state this. Let me, uh, well, let me finish stating this. Some of us then come out of the Eurocentric circle, but we still got the residue of some of those lies. They told us. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to say this and I say this in love, not hating anybody, uh, you know, just cause I tell the truth on somebody don't mean I hate them. Paul said, have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? 
So I said that to say this, Western Eurocentric Christianity is no more than a white man's version of a black history document called the Bible. The Bible is black history. The Bible belonged to so-called black people. The Hebrew Israelites were black people. Now they, they like to say black Hebrew Israelites. Me personally, I'm not offended at that. And I know some Hebrews are, you know, because they love to tag us and name us and do this and that. But these Hebrews were not white people. They was not Middle Eastern people. The, these peoples in the Bible, they were not, they were not Middle Eastern. Middle Eastern is a made up construct by the colonizers who made that up. They went over there and colonized that land. That land was uh, Northeast Africa. That land was connected to, uh, uh, to Africa on the tectonic plate of Africa. They went over there and colonized and, and, and cut a Suez Canal in. They went over there and put a people in the land and called it the Middle East. And they got a bunch of white peoples over there calling them Israelites. And these peoples over there dying second largest skin cancer rate in the world because the climate in the land is killing them. How is how are they the real indigenous people? And yet they in a land that say they are the original people and they dying. How, why would y'all give you a land and the land kill you? No, what happens is those people was not Middle Eastern. Those people were not olive. Those people were not uh, some, some uh, Arabs. They were black people. You know, now black was a name they gave us, but okay, since y'all gave us that name, for the sake of teaching and for the sake of describing it, yeah, these Hebrews were black people, people of color, and Yeshua was too. The Bible says Moses looked at like an Egyptian, was mistaken for an Egyptian. The Bible says Paul was mistaken for an Egyptian. And we know the Egyptian was black people, people of color, contrary to what anybody says. Now, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter two, it behooved Christ to be made just like his brethren in all things. So if Moses looked like an Egyptian, if Paul looked like an Egyptian, guess what? Yeshua looked like an Egyptian because he was made just like his brethren in all things. That's what the book say. And then you go to the book of Revelation with people, follow people who say color don't matter. Who told you that? Color does matter. Color is in the Bible. Everything in the Bible matter. You saying it doesn't matter because you're getting too close to the truth now. We finding out that these were not European. These were Negroes over there. And now color don't matter. No, color matter is in the Bible. Job 30, 30, my skin is black upon me. One of the lovers of Solomon said, I'm black, but I'm beautiful. Hallelujah. Then you go to the book of Revelation. John and uh, uh, John saw uh, the, the, uh, the most high sitting on the throne and he said he looked it like a Jasper stone and a Sardis stone, which looked like Negroes. Got the same color as a Negro. Hallelujah. And you telling me color don't matter. It matters. And if you don't think it matter for my European brothers and sisters, if y'all say color don't matter and some of you black pastors that's brainwashed by the evangelical church, some of you black pastors, if you still want to say color doesn't matter, take down all them white Jesus and let's put up black Jesus then. Okay. And let's put this take, let's ask the evangelicals to take the white Jesus out of their churches and houses and let's put up, put up black Jesus because y'all say it doesn't matter. If it doesn't matter, put up some black Jesuses in your house. I bet you, I bet you you'll find out how much that statement of whole weight uh, if you do that. But, let, but back to my lesson. Uh, back to my lesson. These people uh, are people of color. These people uh, are scattered throughout the earth now. And the Bible told, uh, prophesied that the Israelites is supposed to be scattered throughout the world. And they scattered throughout the nations, the uh, southern kingdom, Judah. The Bible said they went to the four corners of the earth with the four wind by the four winds and that they would remain there till Christ come in the sky to gather his elect from the four corners, the four winds. That's what the Bible said. That's what the Bible said. OK, so Judah is not supposed to be back in a nation. The whole world has been tricked. The Bible says Satan deceived the whole world. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I'm trying to get my uh, let's see. Uh, get my um, slides back up. There it is. OK, I don't know what what happened now. 
Glory to God. I mean, amen. Let me let me get back to my lesson here. Hallelujah. I want to thank the most high for everybody that's tuned in. Uh, and uh, I want to get back to my uh, lesson and keep popping off the screen for some reason. Hallelujah. Get back to my slides. Glory to the Father. Hallelujah. Y'all give me just a minute. Let's see what's going on here. Okay. So it's back on the screen. I hope it stay this time. All righty. <clears throat> okay, let's keep going. Now we're in Daniel chapter 9, verse 24. Uh, the Europeans colonized, and it's a fact. You know, I'm just telling the truth. I'm not, a, I'm not an enemy of Europeans. I'm just telling the truth on Europeans. I tell the truth on black people. I tell the truth on camps. I tell the truth on uh, me. I tell the truth. And when I see sin, I call it out. I'm not your enemy when I tell you the truth. I'm your friend because love rejoice, not in iniquity. Hallelujah. I have to find out why my um, why my uh, slides keep jumping off the screen. Y'all pray because I know the enemy don't want this lesson to go out. So Daniel 9, 24, watch this. All right, watch this. Uh, number one, 70 weeks, 70 weeks. Now we know uh, it don't take much study to know that um, uh, these are 70 weeks of years, not 70 weeks of days, okay? 70 weeks, and we know that 70 weeks amounts to 490 uh, 90 years, okay? Uh, 490, 70 weeks. A week amounts to seven years in the scripture. So now here Daniel said, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people. Now, let, now let me give you a little history of this verse and you can back up in context and read it. Daniel is praying. Daniel is in Babylon along with the Israelites because of being stiff necked, breaking the commandments. And you study they, they was breaking the royal law. Every time you see Israel getting kicked out, getting, uh, getting y'all mad at them, it's about the 10 commandments, the royal law. You don't find them getting kicked out of the land because they ate a catfish. You just just not gonna find it. You don't see them getting kicked out because they didn't put their fringes on one day. Now I'm not down in fringes, and I'm not saying go eat crazy because dietary laws are still good. That's been proven. The Sabbath day Adventists can prove that they they uh they keep they they honor the dietary laws and then uh and they did a statistic a statistics on them, and they are some of the most healthiest people on the planet because they honor the dietary laws. So I'm not down in the dietary laws. I'm not down in fringes. I'm not down in any law that the Most High gave because the Bible said the law is good if you use it lawfully. But I'm just telling you where, where Israel messed up is in that royal law. And that's where they always, they always broke the royal law. It wasn't about anything else. OK, that's my point, because I do a lot of teaching on the royal law, which is the covenant which is the voice. And that, and incidentally, that's what the Most High told Israel to return to when they come, remember themselves in all the nations. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse one down to verse eight. When he said his voice, he's talking about the voice that the whole nation heard together along with Moses uh, when Yah spoke 10 commandments and added no more. They all heard his great voice at the same time. And then Moses brought two documents down, two stones down, and they all saw his glorious, wonderful, powerful handwriting on stone. So when he said voice, that's what he's talking about. But, but Israel rejected that and asked for the law of Moses because they told Yah, don't speak no more. Tell him don't speak no more. And no matter what, what what reason you could say they did it, this is what they did. Then he turned around and said, Moses, you go talk to him and whatever he tell you, we'll do. And this is how they get the law of Moses. So there was always uh, getting in trouble behind that very royal law. They told Yah he didn't want him to speak. And they didn't want him to speak no more. OK, so now uh, when you look at the uh, Deuteronomy 30, verse one down to verse eight, he said, return to my voice. When you when you come to yourself in the nation, he said, return to my voice. You, you'll see that two times. OK, when you and he said, when you when you wake up and when you come to yourself and he said, when you turn to my voice, return to my voice, that then I'm going to turn your captivity. Then I'm going to have compassion upon you. Then I will return and gather you. Then I will 
uh, put you back in your land, then I will put these curses on your enemies when you return to his voice. Go check it out. But that's another lesson. Let's get back here. Okay, so 70 weeks, 490 years, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people. Daniel praying, they in Babylon. Daniel knows, he's reading the book of Jeremiah, and he knows that the time is near that Jeremiah prophesied a 70-year captivity because they had broke the commandments, and Daniel know the time is near, so Daniel began to pray, and he began to talk to Yah about it, and Yah sent an angel to give him an answer. And the angel come and give Daniel the answer. And here's the answer in uh, Daniel 9, 24. The, uh, the messenger told him, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people. These are the Israelites. This is not Christian churches. 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon the holy city. That's Jerusalem. Uh, well, they was taken from and the holy city. Watch this. To finish the transgression and to make an end of sin and to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness. And I want, you, I want to underline that term right there. I didn't highlight it on the screen, but give me a minute. To bring in everlasting righteousness, because I'm going to make a comment on that. And uh, uh, because in order for the Israelites to be made righteous, when they sinned, they had to go off for different bulls and goats and have their sin, sins appeased. But but somebody had to bring in everlasting righteousness, and you know that was Christ. So let me I'm a, I'm gonna I'm come back and make a comment on that. I'm trying to take my time because this is a this is a course, not just an hour or so lesson. This is a whole course, but I'm trying to take my time and break it down. So let me read it again. It says, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people, the Israelites, uh, and upon the holy city to finish the transgression to make an end of sin and to uh, and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and the prophecy and anoint the holy place. Now, let me tell you what that's talking about. Let me, let me, let me just go through each one of them now. 70 weeks, 490 years are determined. This is what the messenger is telling Daniel. Daniel know it's soon time for them to be delivered out of Babylon. So he said 490 years, 70 weeks are determined upon the Israelites. For what? Uh, to uh, determine upon thy people, the Israelites. You can, uh, you can underline people because he's talking about Israelites there. Uh, upon the holy city, you can underline that. He's talking about Israel there. He's talking about uh, Jerusalem. To finish the transgression, Israel transgressed. Israel sinned against the Most High. Most High, so Yeshua got to come and finish this thing, and then they're going to stop offering bulls and goats. Let me keep going. And to make an end of sin. Well, how are you going to make an end of sin with bulls and goats? You can't, because the Bible says in Hebrews, the goat, the blood of bulls and goats could never take away sin. So this verse here is talking about. 490 years is determined upon the Israelites. And then in that uh, in that time, he's going to make an end of sin. Only Yeshua could do that. And he's going to make reconciliation for iniquity. Only Yeshua could do that. And he's going to bring in everlasting righteousness. Only Yeshua could do that. So this verse is talking about there's 490 years, 70 weeks determined upon your people. And, 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 and when this 400 years, 490 years expire, Yeshua is going to be here. That's what he's prophesying. And when Yeshua get here, he's going to be the last offering for sin. He's going to bring an end to sin in the sin in the sense that you can have everlasting righteousness once you're washed in his blood. Once you accept him and follow him, you can walk in everlasting righteousness. Hallelujah. So this verse here is prophesying the coming of the Messiah. And, and he's telling, the angel is telling Daniel, it's 490 years, Yeshua going to be here. Hallelujah. All right. So that's what that verse is talking about. Like I said, I'd have to come back and do a whole nother lesson to, to you know, to uh, because I'm, but, but right now I want to finish this lesson. But now let's keep going. Daniel 9, 25. Know therefore, now watch this, the angel's still talking to him, bringing him a message. Daniel been fasting and praying. He's praying. He's talking to Yah. He was reading the book of Jeremiah, and he read, he understood according to the books that, look, it's just about time for us to get out of Babylon. He's talking to the father, and the father sends him an answer. Okay? Now, verse 25. Know therefore, the, the messenger want Daniel to know. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth, watch this, 
of the commandment to restore, to build the Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince. I told you this was about the Messiah. Now he's breaking it down and telling them what's going to happen uh, in the course of time leading up to the coming of Yeshua, the Messiah. OK, when he comes the first time. And so and I'm going to come back. And we're going to talk about these different phrases that I got under. Uh, underline. But let me finish the scripture. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth uh, of the commandment to restore and uh, to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince, not the Antichrist, Messiah, the prince, shall be 70 weeks, 70 weeks. So that when he says 70 weeks, 490 years, Okay, Daniel. Yes, y'all get ready to uh, go back and 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 re-strengthen the temple. You going back and and I'm gonna give a I'm gonna give you favor and a king. He gonna give you favor with the king and the king gonna make a decree and make a commandment to rebuild that Jerusalem will be able to rebuild that the Israelites will be able to go back and strengthen this second temple, second temple, cause the second temple and the the gates around it was was destroyed. The temple was messed up. They was taken into Babylon. But but y'all going to give him favor. He going to let them out of captivity. They're going to be able to go back and build the second temple and strengthen it. And the king going to give him a command. But the, but the angel said from the time the command to restore Jerusalem is given until Messiah is going to be 490 years. And when he get here, he's going to bring in everlasting righteousness. He's going to end the uh, offering for sin. The veil in the temple is going to be rent and train. And he's going to be the savior. And he, you don't have to offer bulls and goats no more. Hallelujah. I know I'm preaching four or five messages in one, but y'all bear with me. We're going to get through this. Now, I got some things highlighted in Daniel 9, 25. All right. And I got number two, the commandment to restore. That is talking about. Uh, Dan, the, the messenger is telling Daniel uh, he's going to give the Israelites favor with the king and he's going to give a command that they can restore and build Jerusalem because they're getting ready to get out of Babylonian captivity. And he said, now from the time the command is given unto Messiah the prince, 490 years, 70 weeks, 70 weeks. Keep that in mind. OK. And when you go to Nehemiah, you see where uh, they are getting ready to rebuild and re-strengthen the second temple. And you'll see Sanballat caused them some trouble and they had to build the temple in troublesome time. They had to work and hold their weapons and, 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 and be ready to fight at the same time. And I'm going to show you that in the scripture. But they did rebuild and re-strengthen that second temple, the second temple. OK, and this is the same temple that was standing when Christ came. OK, same temple. But right here, they're getting ready to get out of Babylonian captivity and they uh, y'all going to give them favor with the king and the king going to give a decree that they can go back and rebuild and re-strengthen Jerusalem. And up until the time of the Messiah come, it's going to it's going to bring you to the 490 years. Because he said until Messiah, 70 weeks are determined upon you Israelites until uh, the time of the Messiah. Let's keep going. OK, I'm trying to I'm trying to take my time here. All right. Now, watch this. It says in number two, I got it on the line and highlighted. OK, the can the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem unto the Messiah shall be 70 weeks and three score in two weeks. Okay. Watch this. Number four, the streets shall be built again. Talking about after the command is given to re-strengthen the second temple, the streets and everything going to be built again. Say the streets shall be built again and the wall, even in troublesome time. What do we mean by troublesome time? Because they had some trouble when they went back because Sanballat and his group started messing with them. And they had, like I said, they had to build the temple. They had to fight they had to they had to be ready to fight and then then the enemy tried to join in with them and then the israelites said no you don't have nothing to do with this so they had they, they rebuilt the temple the second temple that is in troublesome time just like just like it was prophesied okay now let's keep going hallelujah let's keep going hallelujah now look at daniel 9 26 because see 
I'm going to tell you what, the Europeans, when they conquered this document, they, they taught it from their perspective. But Yah was smart enough to hide this from them because it's not for them. They couldn't see this thing. So they taught it from their perspective. And if they did know what it was saying, they twisted it to deceive us. And that's how we get this crazy, faulty doctrine called Jacob's trouble. When it's really not trouble for Jacob, it's trouble for the, the ones who did Jacob wrong. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. That's where we head. Hallelujah. But we're going we're gonna to deal with this devilish doctrine. All right. Daniel 9, 26. All right. And number five, I'm going to come back and comment on my, on my highlight and numbers in a minute. But let me read the verse. And after three score and two weeks shall the Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary and the end thereof shall be with a flood and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. OK, now I'm going to go back and comment on the things that I got highlighted and scripture bear witness with it. All right, in Daniel 9, 26, after three and score and two weeks uh, shall Messiah be cut off. Now, let me tell you what that's saying and you can go to scripture and find it, okay? Now, the Bible says that from the time the king give the command that they can restore the second temple because they're getting ready to leave Babylon. Daniel knows that it's about time. He's praying. He's seeking God. He's fasting. And the angel done brought him a message. So from the time the king give the command that they can restore Jerusalem and restore that second temple all the way up until Messiah is going to be 70 weeks. Now, when that 70 week get here, the so 70 week going to bring us up to Messiah. The 490 years going to bring us up to the Messiah, Yeshua. Hamashiach, Jesus Christ, is going to bring us up to him. Now, this verse is telling us something that's going to happen in that 70th week. See, seven, the 70th week, we're talking about a week, okay, which is seven years, all right? And I'm going to show you how they, they a lot of these people took this 70th week, and that's what they call it, the Great Tribulation, and put it way over here in the book of Revelation. But I showed you, let me go back for those that's just coming on. I done showed you that you go to Revelation chapter one all the way to chapter two. Look in every single chapter, you can find seven churches, seven spirits, seven golden candlesticks, seven stars, seven lamps, seven seals, seven horns, seven eyes, seven angels, seven trumpets, seven thunders, seven thousand, seven head, seven last plagues, seven mountains. You can't find seven years nowhere in them. They made that up. And most of us in the Hebrew Israelite community still believe this lie called Jacob's trouble. When Jacob's trouble is talking about he's uh, y'all going to trouble everyone that troubled Jacob. This is the wrath of God that's coming on them for trouble in Jacob. This is not some seven years. Jacob got to go through all the stuff we've been through. And you still believe you, you still let them trick you to believe we got something else coming and you can't find it. Ain't no seven year tribulation nowhere in Revelation. But let me get back to my lesson. Let me get back to my lesson. And why would y'all be that thorough with seven years or, or, seven, or seven angels, seven this, seven that, seven that, and you can't find seven years, but yet we just believe it. That's what we get for not letting the scripture interpret the scripture. We let people explain the scriptures to us and people have sold us lies. Hallelujah. So let me get back here. Now, keep in mind, from the time the king give the command to restore the second temple all the way up to the Messiah, you're looking at the uh, 490 years, 70 weeks. But now when that 70th week get here, something going to happen with that 70 week that's going to shave it down to three and a half years. So it's not a week. Hallelujah. It's not a whole week. Now, a whole week is seven years. It's set, uh, uh, when it says 70, it's 70 weeks of years. So it's 70, it's seven years, seven years, seven times seven, 400, seven times 70, 490 years. All right. But when, and, and then 490 going to bring us to the Messiah, but the Messiah is going to only use up three and a half of those seven years, not the whole seven years. And, the, and when Messiah get here, we, we, we coming into the 70th week. 
He ain't going to do his thing. And then after he leaves, there's another seven years. That's where they get that seven years from. But let's go back here. OK, so Daniel 9, 26. After three score in two weeks, shall Messiah be cut off. What Messiah cut off after three and a half years of his ministry? And so when Messiah got here, he wasn't anointed until he went to be baptized of John because you had to be a certain age to enter the priesthood. So he wasn't anointed with the spirit and declared to be the, uh, the, uh, the, the savior and anointed. Cause the Bible said once he was anointed, the dove came down and, the, and John heard a voice that this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And then John said, behold, the lamb of God, which cometh to take away the sin of the world. He was declared to be the Messiah when he went and we was baptized by John. And the, 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 when you go back, I know I'm talking fast here, but let me kind of slow it down. When you go back, when it say anoint the holy, the holy place, let me go back to Daniel 9, 24. It says 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon the holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sin. Now that's Messiah there. When he come with all the stuff he going to do, make an end of sin and to uh, make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness. You can go to uh, Luke Chapter one, verse 73 through 75, when he he going to uh, bring in everlasting righteousness, he said going to bring in everlasting righteousness and he going to seal up the vision because the vision was sealed up. And then when Yeshua ascended after three days and three nights coming from the dead, it was later on that he revealed the seals to John, seven seals. And then John saw these seven seals. But Yeshua sealed some things up just like some things were sealed when, in Daniel's day. And these are the seals that being revealed to John in the book of Revelation. But watch this. And he going to bring in everlasting righteousness. He's going to seal up the vision and the prophecy. Now watch this. And, she, and anoint the holy place. You know what that holy place was? Christ. When he was anointed by John, when he got baptized, because he said, destroy this temple. And in three days, I'm going to build it up. The holy place was in the temple. But the holy place now is the temple, which is Christ. He's the body of Christ. And so the holy place was anointed, which was his body, him. He's the Messiah. Now, let me go back down here. Hallelujah. Uh, Daniel 9, verse 29. After three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. He didn't sin. He came to be an offering for sin. He fulfilled the Mosaic law. He fulfilled every jot and tittle of the law. He was the perfect sacrifice. And in three and a half years of ministry, he was cut off, but not for himself. So the 490 years bring us to Messiah. And it was three and a half years he served as the Messiah, as the Savior, as the Lamb of God in his ministry. And that ate up three and a half years of that 70th week. And so all we have left is three and a half years left. And when you look at the book of Revelation, all you see is three and a half years or 1,200 and some odd days or times, times and a half of time. You can't find no seven years nowhere. But that's where they got that seven year week from. They said, OK, we still got seven more years, which is the seven year week of Daniel to be fulfilled. It ain't no seven year week. It's, it's three and a half years of that seven year week that we got left. And it's going to be fulfilled when Messiah come back. Hallelujah. So when Messiah got here, the 490 years brought us to Messiah. He fulfilled as the Messiah three and a half years of that 70th week. We have three and a half left, period. OK, we do not have a 70, seven week left or seven years left. We have three and a half or years left of that 70th week. Hallelujah. So it says it right here after three score. In two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince shall come. Now this, the people of the prince is these wicked people that's going to come in and uh, hijack the temple. The Romans that's going to come in and do their thing. Okay. Eventually. And you know, we, we know that happened in 70 AD, but it says, <clears throat> but not for himself. Uh, the people of the prince that shall come, they, this, this is something that's going to come. Thereafter, that shall come, watch what they're going to do, shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Didn't, didn't, uh, didn't uh, uh, Yeshua in Matthew chapter 24 
uh, he was talking to the disciples and the disciples said, look, master, look at the temple, how beautiful it is. He said, they're not going to be left one stone upon another. He was prophesying the temple was going, that second temple that they had restored by command uh, to restore in Jerusalem, the, the second temple, that second temple standing when Yeshua got here, but that's the one they restored. And here the disciples is bragging about how beautiful this temple is. And Yeshua said, they ain't going to be left one stone upon another. And so here Daniel is prophesying all the way to Messiah get here. And he said, the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. That's the second temple that they restored that was standing when Christ got here. Hallelujah. And he said, and the end thereof shall be with a flood and unto the end of, a, of the wall. Now watch this. Number seven, desolations are determined. A lot of destructions are determined at this time. And you know, in 70 AD, they destroyed everything. They defiled the temple. They, they, they killed many of the Israelites. And, and you, when you see many of the Israelites going to be killed, a third, some people say a third of them. Gonna, man, what do, you, what do you think happened in 70 AD and the transatlantic slave trade? So you still think, we're going to lose another third of the Israelites. You still think there's another seven year coming? They done trick you. Hallelujah. That's a lying European doctrine that we need to be righteously indignant against because scripture do not bear witness with it. I haven't even got back to Jeremiah 30 yet, but we're getting there. We're getting there. Okay. So desolations are determined. Now, <clears throat> let's go to Matthews. Let's go to Matthews. I want to show you something in Matthews. Hallelujah. I want to. Uh, keep it low key because I need to teach through this. Hallelujah. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So I, I, was, I got so excited. I was reading from my, from my notes and I didn't put this scripture up there. So I want y'all to see it before I go on to the, uh, to Matthews. So here's one of the scriptures that I was quoting and reading. And like I said, I got so excited. I forgot to change the, uh, change the slide. So, uh, my apology, my wife teaching me how to use the slides and teach at the same time. So, Here's the scripture, Daniel 9, 26. It says, and number five, after three score and two weeks, shall Messiah shall be cut off, uh, but not for himself. See, he was cut off before the sins of Israel. He come uh, uh, to be an offering for the sins of Israel. So he was cut off. Uh, the 490 years brought us to the Messiah, the 70th week. He fulfilled as the Messiah three and a half he walked and served this ministry and fulfilled three and a half years of that 70th week when he was anointed to be the Messiah. When the voice came from heaven, this is my beloved son. John said, this is the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. They end the 70th week now of Daniel. And it was only three and a half fulfilled and he was cut off in the middle of the week, in the midst of the week. So there's only three and a half years left of that 70th week. It ain't no 70th week left or seven years left. They lied. Okay. So it says the people of the prince shall come and destroy uh, the city and the temple and uh, the end thereof uh, with a flood and unto the end of the war desolations. Notice that word desolations, plural, D-E-S-O-L-A-T-I-O-N-S. Many desolations are planned for the Israelites. Many tribulations, and I'm going to show you where the great tribulation of Israel started, according to Jesus. We don't have no great tribulation coming in the future for Israel. The, the great tribulation for Israel has already happened. The only thing Israel got going on with them now is we are still in tribulations. Why? Because we still in the lands of our captivity and they still hate us and still causing us somewhat some trouble. But the great tribulation of Israel is behind us. There is nothing coming. It's some coming, but it ain't for Israel. It's for these wicked people that troubled Israel. We're going to get there. Okay. All right. So there's going to be a lot of desolations determined for the Israelites. Okay. Let's keep going. Hallelujah. Now let's look at Matthews. Let's look closely at this. All right. Matthews chapter 24, start at verse one. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. This is the second temple that's standing, the one that they restored after they came out of Babylon, Babylonian captivity. 
and uh, they went and restored that temple. And this temple is beautiful and they got it right. And this is the temple they're looking at now when Yeshua get here. All right. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came to him for to show him the building of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, see ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown, thrown down. Now that goes hand in hand with what Daniel saw because Daniel, and let me back up, let me back up, make, uh, scripture interpret scripture. We don't need nobody to interpret scripture when the scripture explains itself. Hallelujah, let me back up. Let me try to back it up, just one. Let's look at it again. After three score in two weeks, uh, shall the Messiah be cut off? That's when they, that's when he died and hung on a tree, shed his blood for the house of Israel and, and for ultimately whosoever will, but he died for Israel's sin. Okay, I, he said, I come but for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now it says, but not for himself. He, he never sinned, he was perfect. He And he fulfilled the law perfectly. But so he was cut off or he was crucified, not for himself. After three and a half years of declaring to be the Messiah and anointed to be the Messiah. And the next, and it keeps saying, and the people of the prince shall come and destroy the city and the sanctuary. Well, then now let's go back. The sanctuary is standing when Yeshua is here, but now Yeshua prophesied the destruction of that temple. And he said, it ain't gonna be one stone left on another. Let's start over. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came to him for to show him the building of the temple uh, and Jesus said unto them, so the disciples showed them how beautiful this temple is. Jesus said, and he prophesied, see ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. He's prophesied the destruction of the temple by the Romans in 70 AD. Hallelujah. And he goes on to say, let me, let me uh, catch up on my page here. <clears throat> watch, watch this, verse three. He goes on to say, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us, when shall these things be? See, that troubled them. They're like, what? Because they bragging on this temple. So they pull him aside when he's on the Mount of Olives. They said, tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of your coming and the end of the world? They asked him three questions. When shall these things be? What things? When these te this temple going to be torn? You mean this temple that we restore going to be torn down and going to be left a stone upon another? Yes. Then they asked him another question. And what shall be the sign of your coming? He going to tell them that. He going to answer that. And the end of the world. So they asked him three questions. Now let's keep going. Now watch Yeshua. Just watch him. Scripture. Interpret scripture. Hallelujah. Let's go to the next slide. I ain't interpreting nothing. I haven't went to uh, uh, Webster. I haven't went to Greek. I haven't went to Hebrew. I haven't went to any outside sources. I haven't went got to anybody's commentary. We just reading scripture because scripture is no of no private interpretation. And we've been having people privately give us their private interpretation of this Bible. And we've been, we've inherited lies also. Hallelujah. Gentiles inherited lies, but we inherited lies from the Gentile. And some of us, we so adamant, we still want to hold on to them after the scripture rebukes them. So let's keep going. All right. Matthew 24. Watch this. Let's watch it closely. Verse 15. All right. When ye doubt, he's answering their questions. When ye therefore shall see, the, watch this, the abomination of desolation. What did the abomination of desolation come from? Spoken of by Daniel the prophet. So we're going to go back to Daniel and we're going to look and see what Daniel said about the, des the abomination of desolation. And we're going to let the scripture tell us what that is and let Daniel come in on it so we don't try to give a private interpretation to it. Okay. So here's what Yeshua did. He referred the, uh, the apostles back to what Daniel had wrote. Daniel got a message from the angel and Daniel said, okay, uh, here's what the angel said. We're going to restore the second temple. The, the, uh, the, um, the king going to give a command. And from the time the command is given to restore Jerusalem in the second temple, all the way to Messiah coming anointed to be the Messiah, going to be 
490 years, the 70th week is at the time when the Messiah was anointed to be the savior. And he was going to go about work his ministry three and a half years of that 70th week. But the 70th week started right there when he was anointed. So Yeshua is referring them back to the abomination of desolation that was spoken of by Daniel the prophet. We're going to go look at that in a few minutes. But he's answering that question. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso read it, let him understand. Now the Bible telling us, understand what you read. Now watch what it did. And you know, and I, and I got that in parentheses. I put that in there. Uh, because I don't think the parentheses are in there. I'll just put this around it because when I'm highlighting some, I usually put parentheses around it. So it says, whoso read it, let him understand. Now, he didn't say whoso go research sources, let him understand. That's where we make our mistake. Whoso, whoso go out and, 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 and go back and retranslate it from Hebrew, understand. No, just read it. Y'all watch over his word to, to perform it. He watch over it in English. He watch over it in Greek. He watch over it in Hebrew. He watch over it in every single language on the planet that he sent his word to. And it explains itself. So he said, whoso read it, let him understand. Now, Paul said, uh, he said, give attendance to reading and the Lord give you understanding. Bible telling us, trust these scriptures, trust the Ruach, the spirit, and stop trusting what people told you the scripture is saying. So it said, whoso read it, let him understand. Okay, let's just keep reading. And that's all I'm doing. Let's just keep reading. All right, Matthew 24, 16. All right, then let them which be in Judea, watch this now, flee into the mountains. Now let's, now let's lose... Let's for the sake of thinking, let's brainstorm a little bit. All right. They asked the question, when shall these things be? What things? When this temple going to be torn down and destroyed? Okay. Yeshua referred them back to something Daniel said about the abomination of desolation. And he's letting them know this is when the temple going to be. Uh, Daniel prophesied when the temple would be destroyed and, and when the uh, temple would be defiled, when they stand in the holy place and defile it. Then he said, when that happened, this is the second temple now. When, and see, some people got us thinking, oh, wait, they got to build a temple in the Middle East and all this stuff got to happen. Are you serious? I thought we believed we were the Israelites. If we're the Israelites and we still scattered in the nation and you got a people over there who say they Jews and are not, well, how in the world are we going to put them out the land? We going to go back over there as the real Israelites build a temple, and then they're going to come and defile it, and now we got to run to the mountain. How stupid. How stupid. No, we already scattered. We done already ran to the mountain. We already scattered in the earth. If you believe we the real people, now if you don't believe we the real people, then yeah, maybe these Jewish people need to build them a temple if they the real people. They ain't the real people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you know they ain't the real people. Those are Gentiles over there. Jesus said those are Gentiles when Israel get put out. Gentiles are those in Genesis chapter 10, verse 2 through 5. And the owls of the Gentiles uh, is, uh, includes Ashkenaz. Ashkenazi peoples are Gentiles, and those are the ones that's in the land predominantly controlling everything, just like Jesus said. Okay? So you telling me that there, there's a temple, got the third temple got to be built, and then it's got to be defiled, and we got to run to the mountains. I thought we was already in the mountains and scattered all through the world already. So you see how silly that doctrine is? And the Bible, Bible said, Jesus telling them that uh, this is when all of this going to happen. Go read Daniel when he talk about the abomination of desolation. That's going to let you know when the temple is going to be destroyed. And when the temple is destroyed, this is what y'all need to do. Matthew 24, uh, 16. Then let them which be in Judea. These are the real Israelites that's in Judea when the second temple will be destroyed. He said, flee into the mountain. That's us. That's our ancestors. That has already happened. And we we got peoples in the mountains of Africa. We got people taken on slave ships. We got Israelites scattered in the four corners of the earth. We ain't going to go back and build a temple and all this stuff got to happen. It has already happened. So you see how silly that doctrine is? And that's just one silly part of it. Let me, let's keep going. It says, then let him which be in Judea flee into the mountain. Verse 17. It says, let him which 
is on the housetop, not come down to take anything out of the house. Next slide. He's giving them instruction. He's telling them when the temple is going to be destroyed because they asked, said, Lord, when shall these things be? What things? When they destroy the temple and there's not left one stone upon another. He goes on, Matthew 24, verse 18. Watch this. Neither let him which be in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them uh, that are with child and to, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Those people was in the land already celebrating the Sabbath in the land. And, and when the temple was uh, destroyed and he said, now, when this temple, when, this, when they defile this temple and when the Romans come in and when they get ready to destroy this temple, y'all better flee and get out of here. And you better pray it ain't on the Sabbath day and you better pray y'all ain't, uh, you know, y'all ain't got some issues. These these Israelites was already celebrating their Sabbaths and they was already in their land. This stuff has already happened is what I'm trying to tell y'all. Let's keep going. We're going to let the scripture prove that. Hallelujah. Now, uh, verse 21, watch this. Now, watch this. Now, let, now, now, uh, now, I got this slide up here, Matthew 24, 21. For then, keep that in mind, shall be great tribulation. Jesus is telling you when the great tribulation is going to start. Hallelujah. And it started back there with the destruction of the temple and extending it through all the suffering that the Israelites has been through and with them migrating, getting out of there, going to the slave coast and being taken into a worldwide slavery, that was the great tribulation, starting with 70 AD. We do not have something coming worse than what we've already been through and you can't find seven years because it ain't no seven years in Revelation. Okay, so let me slow down and go through this again. Now watch this. For then shall be great tribulation. Jesus told us exactly when the tribulation would start. Let me back up to let the scripture prove that. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. My slides are kind of slow. So bear with me. It'll be going back in a few minutes. Should be anyway. Hallelujah. All right. He said, now he's telling them. What is he doing? Answering their question. When shall these things be? What things? When the temple going to be torn down, there will not left, be left a stone upon another. All right. He proceeds to answer him. He said, neither let him which be in the field return to, uh, to get his clothes and woe unto them with, that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath. Now watch this. And it's kind of slow. Uh, verse 21, for then, when, when all, when you see the Romans, when you see the, the Romans done surrounded the city, they're getting ready to destroy the second temple. They're getting ready to tear down stone upon stone. They're getting ready to kill a bunch of the Israelites. He said, then shall be great tribulation. This is the great tribulation. We do not have a great tribulation for the Israelites coming. It, it, is, it, it has already happened. Hallelujah. Let's keep going. We're going to prove it. We're going to prove it further. Such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. He's answering that question. When shall these things be? What things? Destroying the second temple. And he said, then. When they destroy this temple, surround this temple, y'all better get out of here because then the great tribulation getting ready to start. For who? Israelites. Hallelujah. Now look at verse 22. And except those days be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But, but for the elect's sake, this is it. The elect right here, this is not the churches. This is not the Christian church. These are Hebrew Israelites, the elect. He said, for the elect's sake, those days shall be short. What does that mean? That after 70 AD, when the great tribulation set, was set off and continued all the way down through the time of the transatlantic slave trade, if he wouldn't have shortened those days, they would have wiped us all out because abortion started as a result of us. 
lynching. They lynched us. They killed us. They fed us the alligators. They they shot syphilis in us. They 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 hated us. And Yah said, if I wouldn't have shortened those days, what days? The great tribulation there would be no Israelites left on the planet. And in fact, uh, they probably would have killed all of everybody. But he said, for the elect's sake, I shorten those days. There are laws where they can't feed us to alligators now and get away with it. Why? He shortened those days. What days? The great tribulation. There are, now they still don't treat us completely right. They still haven't been fair to us. But if they caught now putting a knee on the neck and we can go to court and prove it, a cop will go to jail now. That was time when they could put two knees on the neck and kill you and you would never go to jail. What happened? He shortened those days. What days? Some of the suffering and the killing and the lynching and the stuff in the great tribulation that we was going through. And if he wouldn't have shortened those days, we wouldn't have a little rest. And I'm gonna, when I go to Daniel and show you the abomination of desolation, I'm going to show you the same thing that he gave us a little rest but we still in tribulation. But the great tribulation is behind us. Don't let nobody trick you and put you, have you believing for a seven year tribulation coming for the Israelites, all the stuff we done been through. Let's keep going. Hallelujah. Taking me time, but it, this, this doctrine takes time to dismantle. All right, let's go back to Daniel 924. I'm sorry, 927. Watch this. Because remember when Yeshua said he was answering the question, uh, the disciples said, when shall these things be? Hallelujah. I see somebody say, wow, apostle, this is deep. <laughs> well, it's really simple. I appreciate that, but it's really simple. You know why it's simple? Because if we let scripture interpret scripture, we wouldn't be, uh, you know, we wouldn't be believing lies. And see, see some of these urban apologists, uh, you know, that like to explain away scripture, like the well, let me let me go here and tell you what that means. They they trying to explain away what it means. Stop letting people explain the scripture and let the scripture explain the scripture. And that's all I'm doing. That's all I'm doing. And so I, I ain't that smart. The scriptures are smart. The spirit would take you there. And so what am I trying to prove? All of this going to dictionaries and commentary and sources and stuff. Some of that stuff has its place. But the majority of it has been nothing but deception. That's what I'm trying to prove. And I'm just reading a simpler, simple English language Bible. I haven't even went to Hebrew. Now, I know Hebrew was the original language and an awesome language. I understand that. And I ain't trying to down that. But I'm trying to show you y'all watch over his word in any language. And he can teach you truth just by this little English language. Because these are the holy scriptures and they explain themselves. And so, so, so it may, and I understand the compliment, but I'm just saying it may seem deep, but it's not, it's simple. It's just simple reading and letting the scriptures explain itself. And that's why I'm so adamant to prove to everybody, we should just stop letting people teach us these scriptures and let these scriptures teach us from now on and let the spirit and trust the spirit to be the interpreter. That's what I'm trying to prove. Hallelujah. Okay. Daniel 9, 27. Hallelujah. And he shall, no, okay, before I read 27, now remember, this, the disciples asked the question, when shall these things be? One of the things was when the temple is going to be destroyed. Uh, Jesus went on to answer, okay, when you see the city is surrounded by armies, the Romans, when they came in in 70 AD, is what Yeshua was prophesied. When you see that, you better get out of here. If you're on the housetop, don't go back and get no clothes. Get on out of here. And there's another verse I didn't, uh, I must have overlooked it. There's another verse that says those that's already out of the city don't come back. So if you're out already, Yeshua's instruction would don't go back over there because before long, you know why Yeshua said don't go back? Because them Romans going to come up, them Romans going to destroy, going to kill a bunch of people, and eventually them ish people going to take over that land. And, and if you come back over there talking about taking part of that land, I don't think that's all the land. I think it's a sliver of it. But if you come back over there and why them ish people there, you're you going to have all kinds of racism. <laughs> you may get killed. They're going to hate you. And you ain't welcome. And that's why Yeshua told them those that are out of the city, don't come back. Yeshua's, Yeshua's information was don't come back. But some of them came back anyway. I'm sure they got a few uh, Israelites over there, but you don't hear nothing about them because the people who control the lands are the ish people, the Ashkenazi people, and those are Europeans from the descendants of Japheth. 
Genesis 10, verse two through five, the owls of the Gentiles. They are not Hebrew Israelites. If you believe your Bible, black people, hallelujah. So here, before we read Daniel 9, 27, uh, cause Yeshua told the disciples, okay, when you go back to Daniel, when he talked about the abomination of desolation, and it will validate what I'm teaching y'all now, because I'm telling you when the temple going to be destroyed. So let's look at the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel, the prophet, because when Daniel fasted those several days, when they was getting ready to get out the Babylonian captivity and was going to get favor from the king to restore that second temple and build the walls of Jerusalem in the city. Um, he spoke also of the desolation of that temple. He spoke that the temple would be destroyed, but he also gave the revelation that, I mean, the temple would be restored, but he also gave the revelation that it would be destroyed and doing the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet. So let's proceed to read it now because Yeshua said, go back and look at that. So here we are in Daniel, <clears throat> excuse me, Daniel chapter nine, verse 27. <clears throat> I see 265 people in here. I appreciate everybody's, I appreciate everybody's patience. Thank y'all for taking the time to, uh, to come in with us and everybody that's in the chat. My lovely wife is in the chat. She's greeting everybody. I'm usually focused on the lesson. So every now and then I may look off to see the chat. So if anybody's saying anything to me, I don't normally see it. So that's why we don't do questions in the chat because I don't really see them and because I'm trying to focus on the lesson. Now, if there is any serious questions, uh, you can hit me up in my email, scmcci at hotmail.com, or you can wait till the live go off and uh, you can put it in the permanent chat. Now, if we discern that you're serious and you're not some urban apologist or some uh, stiff neck Hebrew that like to debate, if we discern that you really have an honest question, we would do everything we can to reason with you and to go uh, to share other scriptures. But if you want to debate, you got to debate with the scriptures. We do not do the debate thing because I think that's ungodly. That is good for academia, but it's not good for the kingdom. So I said all that to say this, that if anybody is asking any question, I don't know if anybody have, I, I'm not focused on that now. And that's not what we do in the chat uh, while I'm teaching, because I'm trying to focus on the lesson and what the most high is saying. My wife will, will put the email in She'll give you uh, contact information as far as that is concerned. And I want to ask the moderators to help my wife govern the chat. If there's any trolls or any urban apologists or anybody that like to take you off topic, put them in time out. And if you keep having a, a deal with them, then uh, my wife and I will make a decision whether we'll block them or not. Thank you all uh, for uh, bearing with me. And so let me try to finish this lesson. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. <clears throat> Daniel 924. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Now watch this. Now this is this is you can back up. He's talking about he's now see the Europeans took verse twenty seven, and they I didn't heard them teach this, and I used to teach it too because I was deceived by them at one point until Yah woke me up. He woke me up with this right here while I was in the Euro, Eurocentric circle, and and I didn't even know I was Israel at that time until later on. But they took this right here and said, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. They said, this is the Antichrist. This is not the Antichrist. You back up. This is Christ, the Messiah, that's going to bring us to the 490 years or the 70th week. And he's going to be anointed to be the Messiah and work his ministry three and a half years. And he's going to confirm the covenant with many for, for uh, it, it, and it said that he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. That's that whole seven year, that 70 week of Daniel. But why did he say one week? He only did three and a half years. So when he come back, he got to confirm the rest of it, which, which is another three and a half years. And that's the time when he confirm it with the, with the rest of the Israelites when he take them to the wilderness. And then they're going to be three and a half years of the wrath of God, which is really the trouble, those that trouble Jacob, that's going to fall on the Gentiles. And we're going to get there. But he's going to be in the wilderness confirming this covenant. But this other three and a half years with the Israelites. And that's when he's going to get the rebels from among us. He's going to marry the two sticks again, make them one and take them back in the land. That's the three and a, the other three and a half years of entering the bond of the covenant. But it's a whole one week, one week. Seven years, three and a half has been completed because he was cut off in the middle of that week. What week? The 70th week that Daniel saw. 
We only have three and a half more years of that week, period. Hallelujah. So let's go. So this is the Messiah confirming the covenant for a week, not the Antichrist. Back up and read it in context. They lied and said this was the Antichrist. Not so. This is Christ. He shall confirm the covenant with uh, with many for one week. And now watch this. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. They say this is the Antichrist when he come into the temple after three and a half years and reveal itself. Lie. This is talking about the Messiah within within when he died and when he uh, when he worked his ministry three and a half years of that seven year week he died the veil and the temple was rent in twain, hallelujah, and 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 the and all the offering the daily offering ceased. They didn't have to offer bulls and goats no more because the last sacrifice has been offered, which was the body of Yeshua Hamashiach. That's what this is talking about. Hallelujah. And I have many other scriptures. I want to stay on course with this now. It says, and he shall confirm the covenant with many. See, it was many. He didn't confirm it with everybody. So, so when we go to the wilderness, why is it that the rest of the family got to enter the bond of the covenant? Because many has already entered it. The apostles entered it. He confirmed it with the apostles. He confirmed it with those that's been born again. He confirmed the covenant with many, but when he get in the wilderness, the whole family will enter the bond of the covenant. That's what he's talking about. So we don't have to wait till the wilderness to enter or taste the covenant. You can be born again now and enter the covenant. But because a lot of people, a lot of Hebrew Israelites are not born again, some of them, when they take into the wilderness, then will enter the bond of the covenant within that other half of that 70th week. Hallelujah. Everything match. Okay. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. He got one week, that 70th week of Daniel, to confirm the covenant with the rest of the ones that didn't get confirmed, but many of them was confirmed with one week. Uh, uh, and in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abomination, he shall make it desolate even until the consumption con uh, uh, the, uh, the consummation is what I meant. And that determined uh, that that is determined shall be poured up on the desolation. Now, that word con consummation is the completion of everything. In other words, he's going to confirm the covenant in the, with many and within that three and a half years, and then uh, he gonna come back for the completion of everything. That's the other three and a half years of the 70th week of Daniel, when he take the Israelites to the wilderness and he confirmed and they entered, they entered the bond of the covenant. That's what that is. But when he died and uh, all the offerings and all the oblations and all the offering of bulls and goats, that's why the veil in the temple was rent from top to bottom, uh, 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 you know, in, uh, however it was, dot, uh, bottom to top, whichever one, I, I don't have the scripture before me, but that's when the veil was rent in twain when he died because you didn't have to go back there and offer blood on the mercy seat no more. So the daily sacrifice was ceased and go to the book of Hebrews. They said, you don't have to offer bulls and goats no more because Christ was the final sacrifice. And that's why that those offering of bulls and goat seats and, and eventually the temple was torn down so they couldn't go in and offer nothing. Hallelujah. So that's what this is talking about. This is not the Antichrist here. But the Europeans told us this was the Antichrist. Lie. No other verses confirm that. Hallelujah. So it says, and uh, let's go to the next, next one here. Hallelujah. Go to the next slide. Glory to God. I'm getting excited, but let me calm down because I want to get through this. My slides are moving very slow, so y'all bear with me. I just clicked it. We're waiting on it to uh, to go to the next one because I don't want to get ahead of nobody. Okay, Daniel 11, 31. Of course, Yeshua said, uh, uh, okay, they asked him the question, when shall these things be? He said, go look at what Daniel said about the abomination of desolation. So here we go. Daniel 11, 31. Now watch the abomination of desolation and watch what's supposed to happen after the abomination of desolation when they defile the temple. Watch what's supposed to happen. And I'm gonna prove to you, it has already happened. It's not coming, okay? So now, Daniel eleven thirty one, 31. An arm shall stand on his part 
and they shall pollute the sanctuary. What sanctuary? The second temple that was restored after the Babylonian captivity. They restored it and uh, the angel told Daniel from the time of the commandment to restore that second temple all the way to the Messiah come is gonna be 490 years, which is exactly 70 times 70. Uh, seven, I'm sorry, seven times 70, which is 490 years. Uh, a year, a week is seven years. So he said from the time that second temple is rebuilt and strengthened, and it's going to bring us all the way to the Messiah. And the Messiah is going to be the 70th week when he worked, start working his ministry. And he only worked his ministry for three and a half years of that 70th week, which means he only got three and a half left. That's when he deal with the Israelites in the wilderness, when he take them back to the wilderness. So here it is. It says, an arm shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength. This is the abomination of desolation. And shall take away the daily sacrifice because they had to offer daily sacrifice. But when the last sacrifice, which is Yeshua, is offered, the veil in the temple is rent in twain, and there will be no more daily sacrifice. And then the temple will ultimately be destroyed, just like Christ prophesied. And there will not be left one stone upon another. There ain't going to be left no well and wall. Hallelujah. Those are just lies told by Europeans and colonizers. Hallelujah. So it says, of the, uh, it says, an arm shall stand on his place, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength and shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that make it desolate. This is when they defile the temple, the second temple, okay? The second temple. And incidentally, I don't believe no third temple gonna be built over there in the Middle East by those people. I just believe that's a lie. Even if they build one and ain't no third temple for the Israelites, it's their first one, because they ain't the people. Hallelujah. I see evidence that the temple will be established when Yeshua bring us back in the land doing his rule. That's what I see. I done already taught a lesson on that, but I throw that in for free, won't cost you nothing, but let's get back to this lesson. Okay, so it says the abomination that make it desolate. This is what Yeshua told the apostles when they asked him the question, when, when would these things be? He referred them back to Daniel, prophecy about the abomination of desolation. We're looking at it. Now let's read verse 31. And such as do we, now after, the, after they defile the temple, pollute the temple, this is called the abomination of desolation. Let's see what happened after they defiled the temple. And then let's determine whether this stuff has happened or will happen. Okay. Now, verse 32. And now, they done defiled the temple through, Dan through Daniel's vision and prophecy. All right. Verse 32. And such as do wickedly, a lot of those Israelites was going to do, do wickedly. And some of them had already done wickedly and broke the covenant. And it was the Ten Commandments they broke. Okay. Okay. And it says, and such as do wickedly against the covenant. See, it wasn't the Gentiles in covenant. It was the Israelites. So it was the Israelites that was doing wicked. And that's what got them destroyed. The temple destroyed and got them kicked out. So it says, and such as do wickedly against the covenant. These are the Israelites. Ain't nobody in covenant with y'all but Israel. Against the covenant shall corrupt, uh, shall he corrupt by flatteries. Okay, in other words, the Israelites that broke the covenant uh, will be corrupted through flatteries. They're going to be flattered. They're going to be tricked. They're going to be fooled. They're going to be mistaught. They're going to be, they're going to have their heritage taken. And y'all know that's why we're here just now waking up. We didn't know we was the Israelites, but when the Israelites broke the covenant, this set off the great tribulation for them, leading, starting first with the abomination of desolation and the destruction of the temple in 70 AD, leading up leading on through the transatlantic slave trade. That was the great tribulation for Israel. Yeshua said it, hallelujah. So he said, and such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries, but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploit. Some of those Israelites held on to their faith. Some of them held on to the covenant. Daniel, even when he was in Babylonian captivity and the three Hebrew boys, if they, the Bible said they was honored by God. They, 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 the Bible said they was respected by heaven, but yet they was in captivity. So some Israelites, be it a few, they held on to Yah and his covenant and they did what was right. But a bunch of them broke the covenant for the most part, the most of the nation. And they was, they, they was tricked by people. 
But it says the ones that know their God, who the Israelites that know who Yah is, shall be strong and do exploits. Now look at, this is after the abomination of the desolation. Okay, that the vision that Daniel saw. Let's see what else gonna happen after the abomination of desolation in the vision that Daniel saw. Uh, Daniel 11, cause Yeshua referred the apostles back to this. So Daniel 11 verse 33, uh, let me catch up where I am on my paper here. Watch what it says. Daniel uh, 11, verse 33. Watch what it says. All right. Because we're looking at what's going to happen after the abomination of desolation in the vision that Daniel saw. So when the abomination of desolation happened, sometime after Yeshua has died, rose from the dead three days, after three days, three nights, and ascended back to the right hand of the Father. Now the temple going to have to be destroyed. The abomination going to have to come just like Yeshua prophesied and just like Daniel showed us. So when this temple is destroyed, what's supposed to happen? Let's look at it. Daniel 11, And they that understand among the people, talking about the Israelites, shall instruct many. Many Israelites going to instruct people. This is how the gospel spread it to the world. This is how he said, you're going to be scattered into every nation on the planet. Well, when they were scattered everywhere, they, they that knew their God held on to them and they taught the word. And they opened up sanctuaries everywhere, many of them. Some of them had to go on the ground or from house to house. But this is how the word began to spread everywhere. But the ones who broke the covenant, many of them was killed during the uh, time of the Romans. And we know many was killed during the time of, of the transatlantic slave trade. But some of them held on to, to their faith. Okay, so Daniel eleven thirty three, and they that uh, understand among the people shall instruct many. Now watch this. Yet, even though they instructed, even though they held on, they was killed too. Many of many of those just people was killed. When you look at James chapter five, when the, uh, James prophesied to the wicked people who enslaved the Israelites and got rich off of them, he said, "Woe unto you, rich men!" He said, "The the hire of the labor has come up before the most high." And he was letting these people know that enslaved the Israelites. He said, y'all got a judgment coming for y'all. And he said, you killed the jest. You slaughtered them. Who is that? Some of these Israelites that held on to God, they still were slaughtered. They still was killed. They still had to slave, but they killed them. And so there's a judgment coming for them. So that's what the scripture is saying. It says that they that uh, understand among the people shall instruct many, yet they shall fall by the sword. They killed the Jets. They killed the apostles. The apostles was just men. And so they slaughtered them. So there's a, the day of his wrath and Jacob's trouble is the trouble that's going to come on the world for what how, how they troubled Jacob. That's what that is. We're going to get there. Just bear with me. We move him. But now watch this phrase right here. After the abomination of desolation in uh, Daniel 11, 31. This is what's going to happen in Daniel eleven thirty three. They shall fall by the edge of the sword. Didn't Yeshua prophesy that in Matthew chapter 24? He said they're going to be led away captive. They're going to fall by the edge of the sword. And they're going to be hated of all men for my name's sake. You telling me that has not happened? Yes, that has happened. You know why I know it's happened? It has happened. We are the Israelites and we have woke up and found out and we scattered in all the nations. So therefore, the abomination of desolation has already happened. The second temple is already destroyed and you know that. And so there is no such thing as building a second, a third temple. And then now we got to be scattered all over again if we the real people. You see how silly that is to think that all this stuff is coming when in reality it has already happened. And whoop, here we are in the nation scattered. Waking up, just like Moses said, Deuteronomy 30, verse 1 down to verse 8, we waking up, remembering ourselves after the scattering. When was the scattering and being led away captives, fall by the edge of the sword, being hated by all men that was supposed to take place? After the abomination of desolation and the destruction of the temple, Daniel eleven thirty one. 31. So when you go back to Matthews, you read that Yeshua said, then, when they come to destroy the temple and defile it, then shall be great tribulation. So we don't have no great tribulation coming, saints. And if you want to look for some, help yourself. I don't, don't, don't teach me that lie, and I ain't gonna be here with you. As for me and my house, we looking up because our redemption drawing nigh. And I'm gonna show you that the Bible said when the Hebrews wake up, 
I'm going to show you what we are to expect. We are not to expect another whooping and another scattering. We are already scattered all over the world. So after the abomination of desolation, according to Daniel 1131, 1133, tell you what's going to happen. They shall be, they shall fall by the edge of the sword and by flame. Now watch this. And captivity. Aren't we already, didn't we already go through captivity? How in the world we got another captivity coming? If you claim that we got the seven years of uh, uh, Jacob's trouble, seven years coming, uh, after the abomination of desolation, after they build the third temple, then we got to be scattered all over again. We got to go in a transatlantic slave trade again. We got to fall by the edge of the sword again. Man, we already done fell by the edge of the sword and still getting killed at red light. You see how that stuff don't make any sense? And then on top of that, you can't find seven years nowhere in the book of Revelation. Nowhere. It's a dumb doctrine and it's a residue that some Hebrews still have in them, and we need to let that doctrine go because the Europeans twisted the word, trying to and then try to teach a rapture like they're going to escape. Israel got to go through seven years of great tribulation. They lying. No, they going through it. What's coming is for them, not for us. Hallelujah. Let's keep going. So we know that falling by the edge of the sword has already happened, still happening to us. We know uh, being going away in captivity, according to Daniel 11, 33, has already happened. We already been in captivity and he done short in those days. So we not in the same captivity, but we still in the lands of our captivity. They still hate us. So we still in tribulation, but the great tribulation is behind us. Hallelujah. Let's go to the next slide. Then it said many days. I think that was that 400 year plus, uh, 400 year many days because he said the seed of Jacob going to be in a land that's not there for 400 years. We done already completed that. And we some days after that 400 years, which I believe is the judgment. Judgment's falling on the nation. I believe it's time for Yeshua to come back and get us not to go on another captivity tour. Well, not a tour, captivity slavery. That done already happened. Hey Amen. The Europeans lied to us with their false doctrine taking our book and twisting it, teaching it to us. Stop letting them teach you. Western Eurocentric Christianity is nothing but a white man's uh, version of a black history document called the Bible. The Bible is black history. I'm not saying that because I hate anybody. I'm saying that because I love people and love do not rejoice in iniquity. Those have been lies and iniquity that they told us. And a lot of the white people that have inherited lies need to wake up before they uh, experience the same thing where you're going to experience it one way or the other because the Bible said your ancestors it brought, brought things upon you. The Bible said don't be deceived. God's not marked. Whatever man sow, he shall reap. And some of you Europeans that say, well, I ain't had nothing to do with it. I didn't have no slave. Well, we ain't had nothing to do with what our ancestors did to get us get us put out the land and scattered in slavery. But yet we did we we're here. So if you think you just gonna skate scotch free, escape scotch free, you got another thing coming. Now you best better run and make amends and make some restitution and accept this black messiah, get your butt saved and start trying to pay some of the Hebrews back if you're really serious. And maybe Father have mercy on you, but don't think you done escape. No, one day with the Lord is as a thousand years and a thousand years is one day. It don't matter that it's been a long time. It was just like it was yesterday to y'all. And what y'all wicked ancestors did, I'm telling you the truth, not because I hate you, but you better hear me. What y'all wicked ancestors did is coming on y'all. It's going to cause all of these curses that's on Israel and these people that's waking up the Bible say they're going to put them on your ancestors. Okay. And you can't claim, oh, I wasn't there. I didn't have slaves. Well, neither was we, but we was whooped for what our ancestors did. And Yah is no respecter of person. That's the truth. Have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? No, I'm telling you the truth. And you better start doing something about it if you want to make it to the kingdom. Hallelujah. And I, I don't think many of them going to make it. I'm going to be honest with you. And I'm not, I hope I'm wrong now. I just don't feel like it because y'all hate us. Many of you, you hate us. And you don't lie to us too long. And you're living your own lies and you don't inherit it li lies yourself. But let me get back to my lesson. Hallelujah. 
Glory to the Father. Okay, we're on our next slide. Let's look at Daniel uh, 1134. Now when they shall fall, that's talking about when they fall by the edge of the sword, when they led away captive, folks, that has already happened. And that and, and Daniel said this would happen when the temple is de defiled, the abomination of desolation, temple is destroyed. The great tribulation has already happened for Israel. And we done already been scattered. That's why we in the lands waking up. That is not coming. So that was a lie. The Europeans made us believe that. That's what they want us to believe. But what's coming is for them, not us. Okay. So it says, now they shall fall. It says, now when they shall fall, we're talking about the Israelites, they shall be hoping with a little help. Didn't I go to Matthews and show you that he said, except those days be shortened, that no flesh would be saved, but for the elect saved, he shortened those days. We have come out of the great tribulation. We are still in tribulation. What that means is he doesn't shorten those days. We're not in great tribulations anymore, although we still in tribulation. This is what he's saying. After the abomination of desolation, after they taken captive for many days or 400 years, or after they done went through all the lynchings and all the uh, uh, 70 AD, they're going to have a little help. That's what we in, we're in the time of a little help. They just can't do anything they used to do to us. Now, that's why. That's why Daniel prophesied and he saw by the spirit, they shall be hoping with a little help. We have a little help now, but they still hate us. OK. But many shall cleave to uh, cleave to them with flatterers. So be careful about all these people trying to say they cleave into Israel, but they still hate Israel. No, I believe Israel got a right not to just trust everybody, especially G Gentiles that have hated us and done us wrong face value. No, we got a, we got a, uh, what they call it. I think they call it, um, um, proof. Uh, I forget what they call it. Verify, uh, you verify. Okay. Not that we holding something against you, but if you say you love us and you want to cleave the Israel, prove it, prove it. Don't say, Oh, I stand with the awakening. I'm talking to Gentiles, European, or oh, I believe y'all the people. I believe this, prove it, prove it. And if you can't, and you know why we can say prove it? We have 400 plus years of the European lying to us. And so you don't think we're going to go another four. Well, we then won't be no 40 years, but you don't think we're going to go another year just taking you at your word face value. No, it's time. Uh, it's time to uh, trust and verify. Now, that's just fair. Hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about. Glory to God. And that ain't holding nothing in your heart. That's looking back through experience saying we can't trust y'all. So tr we need to trust and verify now. Prove it. You Gentiles that follow me, you Europeans that listen to me, prove it. And do you, do you, if you're a righteous preacher, woman or man, do you stand up and confront your own ancestors for what they did to us? If you can't call them out like I call them out and call my own people out, you can't teach this book and you can't be real. Period. Call them out. Where was you when we was going through slavery, these evangelical churches? You were silent and you was in agreement. And so that's why we said we're going to trust and verify. We don't want nobody cleaving to us to flatter us now. Those days are over. And we're not saying that because we hate you. We're saying that because we want to trust and verify if you want us to trust you. Because we got enough history to, to bank on what we saying now. And y'all know that's true. Hallelujah. So let's keep going. Uh so it says, but many shall cleave to them with flatteries. Daniel 11, 35. We got over 300 and some peoples in here now. Greetings to everyone. Thank y'all for bearing with me because we're going to get we're going to get to Jacob's trouble in a few minutes. I'm going to tear that lie up with the scripture. I ain't went to no dictionary. I ain't went to no Greek. I haven't went to no Hebrew. I haven't went to no commentary. I'm just reading the scriptures. Hallelujah. And I'm making a point that these scriptures interpret themselves. We don't need these urban apologists telling us this, what that means. No, let the book tell me what it means. Let's keep going. Okay, Daniel eleven thirty-five, 35. And some of them of understanding shall fall to try, to try them and purge them. The time of purging is now when we went through this great tribulation, not some seven years when the, some of the Israelites are gonna be left behind, go through a seven year tribulation, got the run from the mark of the Antichrist and got to be purged. We done been purged. The one that's going to be purged is being purged right now. 
Hallelujah. We ain't got nothing coming but to look up because our redemption draw at night. That's what we got coming. And the wilderness, where the wilderness is going to be turned into Eden and Israel, the uh, southern kingdom, northern kingdom going to become one stick and we're going to be remarried into the bond of the covenant to the most high God, the God of Israel. He going to marry us again. That's what we got to look forward to. But the Gentiles got a harbor day coming. That's what uh, Jeremiah 30 was talking about. Alas, that day is great. It is never be another day like it. And that's, I'm going to show you, that's why they was turning pale. Black people don't turn pale. We'll get there. Okay. All right. <clears throat> uh, Daniel 11, 35. And some of them of understanding shall fall to try them and to purge and to make them white even to the time of the end, because it is yet for a time appointed. Okay, this is when Daniel saw the vision. It was yet for a time appointed. And then the angel, there were some things Daniel didn't understand about the vision and about the things that he was showing, and he was troubled. And, and uh, uh, the messenger says, seal up the book, Daniel. And I believe this is where we get the seals from that we run into in Revelation and from Yeshua, that he had to come back by Revelation and open up and show uh, John, Apostle John, the seven seals, because they told Daniel, seal the book. Okay, so now let's keep going. <clears throat> Daniel eleven thirty six, 36. And the king shall do according to his will. All these kings, all these rulers, all of them did according to their will. Whatever king is in charge and whatever age and whatever dispensation and during the time of the great tribulation, it's not just some one king because kings don't live forever. Okay. So, and the king, whatever king is in power at that time, and the king shall do according to his own, to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every God. <laughs> and you know, that's what the Gentiles are doing now. They see themselves as God called white supremacy and shall speak marvelous things against God. That's a capital G-O-D. And the, uh, against the God of gods. That, that ain't nobody but the great and awesome God, Yahweh. Amen? God of the Hebrews. But they're going to exalt themselves above him. And it says, and they shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished. Now, let me share this with you. These kings, whoever they be in whatever time frame they're living in, they're going to exalt themselves above the Israelites, above the God of the Israelites, and they shall prosper, the Bible say, till the indignation be accomplished. What indignation? The same indignation that Yeshua prophesied and told the Israelites before he went to die on that cross. He said, these be the days of vengeance and that everything written in the book of Moses that on you Israelites, y'all got to go through. And that was the uh, worldwide slavery being fallen by the sword, hated by everybody, the temple being torn down. And because this is the these are the curses that would come on you for breaking the covenant. And Yah was upset and this indignation are these days of vengeance, Israel, you must fulfill. So that's why these kings prospered and uh, they, was, they, they prospered and they defeated the Israelites and they caused them to suffer. They lynched them, they killed them. Why? And, and, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished. There's one day when it's over where they can't punish us no more and y'all coming back to get us, and he's going to take the curses off us that the book of Deuteronomy uh, prophesied, and he's going to put them on the ones that troubled Jacob. So Israel have to go through it until that time. All that is written when they broke the covenant will be fulfilled. That's what Daniel saw, and Yeshua talked about it in Matthew. For that is determined shall be done. What was determined? Everything that's written for y'all being stiff neck and breaking the covenant got to come to pass before you get out of this mess. That's what he's talking about. Let's keep going. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father. Let's keep going. I don't know where I am, but it looks like I got a couple more pages. So this is not a short message. Amen. But it's necessary. Hallelujah. <clears throat> I'm waiting for my slide to respond. Glory to the Father. Amen. Let's see that. Give me one second. Let me get a drink of water here. We're going to keep on going. Hallelujah. We're almost there. We're almost to Jeremiah. Oh, I think we are. I think we're there. Hallelujah. I think we're there. Hallelujah. Take a little break here. Be right back with you. 
Hallelujah. Okay. So uh, we looked at Daniel 11, 36, and it talked about uh, these kings or who, who was ever over, or running the land or over the Israelite. They was going to prosper until uh, uh, the indignation be accomplished or the things that was written on the Israelites would be over. Because Israel had to go through all these curses until uh, Yeshua come in the sky and send his angels to gather us out of all the lands we're scattered in. And, and he got to go to the four corners to get Judah and bring them back. That's when the tribulation is over. And then the Bible said immediately after that time is finished, he coming back to get us immediately after the tribulation of those days. He didn't say immediately after the great tribulation. Go read it. The great tribulation started with the uh, the, the uh, abomination of desolation, destruction of the temple, all the Israelites that was killed, having to scatter everywhere, them coming to the slave coast, taking us and scattering us around the world as slaves. That was the great tribulation. Now Israel is in tribulation. And when immediately after the tribulation, not the great tribulation, because the great tribulation is behind us, immediately after the tribulation, talking about the rest of the tribulation we are in now, by being in the lands of our captivity, then Yeshua shows up in the sky. What is he coming for? To get his elect from the four winds. Who is that? Judah. They went to the four wind four corners. Where are the other ones? Scattered in Africa and all over the world. Two to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. James 1 verse 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. Two to the strangers scattered everywhere. They scattered. Where are the Israelites in 2023? Scattered in all the nations. They don't have a nation because they scattered to all the nations and all the scriptures bear witness. 1948 was not us. It was another people playing like they us, and it was nothing but colonization, colonizers going in, just like the Bible say in uh, Genesis 9, 27, Japheth was going to enlarge and take over the tents of Shem and uh, 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 Shem and, 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 and Canaan was going to be a servant. The Europeans, which is uh, the descendants of Japheth, Genesis 10, verse 2 through 5, was going to conquer everybody, take over the tents of Shem and Canaan going to be a servant. And they did it just like the Bible prophesied. And they end part of the land today, running it, controlling it, just like Jesus said that the Israelites will be led away captive and there will be Gentiles in the land all the way to the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Bible is true. Am I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Europeans, you need to know the truth. Black people, you need to know the truth. Those of you black pastors that sleep and don't know we the people, you need to know the truth. You're reading the same Bible I'm reading, but you're reading it through European, European eyes and you're deceived. Wake up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That little zeal just came. So let me get back to the teaching mode. Glory to the Father. Okay, now we're in Jeremiah. All right. This is this. Well, I got one more page after this. We're getting ready to tear up that Jacob's trouble lie. They told us Jacob's trouble is seven years of Jacob's trouble, seven years of tribulation coming for Jacob. Lie. Let me say it again. They taught us that seven years of Jacob's trouble is seven more years to come after we all after all the stuff we've been through, finding out we're Israelites. They telling us we got seven more years of tr great tribulation. That's coming for us. Lie. Something is coming. It is not for us. It is for them. Jacob's trouble is all about the people who troubled Jacob. So when you look at that little turn in this chapter that says Jacob trouble, it is it could be very deceiving. And somebody took that little turn and thought it was trouble for Jacob. And nothing in this chapter agrees with that. How you take one little verse out of a chapter and make it say something that the whole chapter is against. And I'm going to show it to you and show you how silly that doctrine is. And there are some Hebrews 
that still till this day believe we got a seven year great tribulation coming and they got it from their European fathers. Well, when they were our fathers, when they taught us those lies, that's a residue of a European doctrine that did not come from the Hebrews. Let's go. All right, I'm gonna take my time here. Y'all go back and check me out. I challenge everyone, double check. Amen, don't take my word. I ain't reading nothing but scripture. Let's go. All right, now that term Jacob trouble in this English translated King James Bible, the term itself, Jacob trouble, just that term, only found one time. It was one time, Jacob's trouble. That's all I found. And if anybody find it twice, I'm talking about the term Jacob trouble. I found it only one time. How you can take one time or one thing and make a doctrine out of it when the Bible said in the mouth of two or three witnesses, you you uh, you you build a doctrine or establish a thing. And then uh, you can't go back to Daniel and hook something up. But of course, we don't went through the scripture now. It ain't no 70 weeks. It's three and a half more uh, years to that week left because Messiah fulfilled uh, uh, fulfilled uh, three, um, three and a half of that 70 week. Let me see. I think I'm gonna knock my thing off here. Hallelujah. I'm getting excited, y'all. Hallelujah. Thank y'all for bearing with me. I, I, I'm gonna get through this chapter. Then I got one other thing to do, and then I'm gonna be finished. Seems like I done lost my slides. Maybe I'm, I need to get my wife to put them back in. I don't know what happened. Hallelujah. But if we can't get my slides back up, why don't you, uh, if you got your Bible, go to uh, Jeremiah chapter 30. And we're going to start at verse one, because I want you to see it. Wow, somebody said, oh, apostle done pulled. Let me see. Glory to God. Apostle done pulled the street off the heathens now. Yeah, I'm, I'm taking a rug from under them. They liars. Amen. I'm not trying to broad brush everybody. But a bunch of them been liars. They had some wicked ancestors that simply lied to us. And those those Gentiles, you, you Europeans, you, you, if, when you acknowledge what your ancestors did to us and how they lied to us, you need to be standing up against them. And if you can't stand up and call them out, you don't love Israel. That's just a fact. Stop telling us you love us. We need to trust and verify now. And you, you shouldn't blame. If you blame us, that's your business. But why can you blame us after we have 400 plus years of how they treated our ancestors? And now we done found out Jesus was not a European. And y'all told us he was a white man. Y'all gave us white Jesus. Y'all gave us white uh, Israelites. Y'all did all of this stuff. And now that we cry out, y'all call us, some of y'all, not all of you, y'all call us racist? That's reverse psychology. No, y'all set up the racism. Your ancestors did that. And now that we found out, of course, we righteously angry. Now, some of our brothers are really fleshly angry, and that's why they're cussing y'all out on the streets. Now, I'm not going to cuss y'all. I, I, I'm going to trust the spirit. I don't think that's right. But I understand why they feel the way they feel. 400 plus years of y'all lying to us. And now that we are addressing the truth, you want to call us racist? You revealing your heart and all you evangelical churches, shame on y'all. You won't call Trump out for all this lying and raping and uh, uh, being a, a thief and everything. And in fact, all of, all the whole system, Democrat and Republican, both of them uh, are about nothing, period. Hallelujah. And uh, I, that's just how I feel about it. And I'm saying that in love. Amen. You know why I say that? Because the last Congress had 118 different senators and uh, congressmen, and all of them are descendants of slave owners. And because the guy did a report, and it was far more than 118, he just didn't get around to all of them. And every one of them, all 118 congressmen, said that slavery was wrong, and they said that slavery was horrible, and it, it was the original sin of America and not one of them, Democrats and Republicans, not one of them made one law to record or to repay or even think about uh, giving reparations to the evils that they have done to us. So now I shouldn't be disappointed and I shouldn't call y'all hand on that, 
No, every righteous preacher ought to rise up and say something about it because we all done had plenty of time. You done paid reparations to everybody. You done, you done gave everybody crime bills. You have overlooked us and we supposed to be quiet? No, we're going to speak up. And we speaking up because it's injustice. Hallelujah. And if you claim you love Israel and you claim you love us, but you keep in silence, shame on you, trust and verify, bring forth your proof. And if not, guess what? You may be out of the kingdom because he said, I'm going to bless them that bless you and I'm going to curse them that curse you. Now you believe that when you thought them other people was the real people. Now we finding out and we got proof by these scriptures and outside sources and the scriptures inside sources that will the people. And if y'all don't do right, y'all in trouble with the most high and the Jacob trouble is about you, not us. Now I'm saying that to you as a preacher of righteousness, not because I'm ready to cuss you out because I ain't going to do that. I'm going to live holy. Hallelujah. But I'm going to tell you the truth. All right, look like we're having problem with getting our um our slides back on the screen, but my wife is still working on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and start reading Jeremiah. So if you have your Bible, I want you to look at it. I wanted it on the screen, but we're having some problems with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and read Jeremiah because we're gonna go down and we're gonna look at that one verse. Uh verse seven says uh in my text, alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be delivered out of it. I'm going to show you nothing in the chapter agree with that some seven years coming for Jacob. This ain't about Jacob being punished again. This is about the Europeans that punished Jacob. That's what Jacob's trouble is. It's about those who troubled Jacob and all the chapter bear witness with the statement I just made. So, all right, we got it back on the screen. Thank the father for that. If it goes off again, please just look at your own Bible because I want y'all to see this. We're going to come down and read everything in context. All right. We just read the Bible. Jeremiah 30, verse one. <clears throat> the word uh, the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, so this is from the Lord. It's not from Curtis Lewis. Verse two, thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel. 